Hey, how are we doing? It's Ben from EQL Networks and Security. Today, we're going to be comparing two of Hikvision's ColorView Bullet cameras against each other. You know, it's the DS-2CD 2T, I don't know, listed here. And then it's the DS-2CD something something 2087, and that'll be listed here. So both cameras are capable of producing 8 megapixel 4K footage, and they've also been engineered with ColorView and AccuSense technology. Now, if you're not familiar with AccuSense, it's basically AI algorithms used to detect people and vehicles. So this is really going to be interesting to see how they perform. It's basically the battle of the bullets. We've already done individual reviews of these cameras, so you haven't seen those yet, we recommend watching those first. We'll put links to those videos in the descriptions below. If you've already seen those videos, then skip to this timestamp to basically see those comparisons. And if you're new to this channel and like what you see here, be sure to hit that subscribe button and give us a thumbs up. If you have any other questions or comments, don't be afraid to hit us up in the comment sections below. Now, let's get right into this. So first up, both cameras are all metal apart from the plastic front cover and both have a built-in white light LED and are also IP67 rated. As mentioned at the start, these are part of the latest G2 series of IP cameras and have the latest AI for detecting people or vehicles. The cameras we are testing are a 2.8mm lens but are also available in 4mm and 6mm. Both cameras have a 1.2 inch sensor with a wide dynamic range of 130 decibels and an aperture of 1.0. Now let's take a look at some Dory specs. If you're not familiar with Dory, essentially what it is is a set of parameters which allow you to gauge what you can detect, observe, recognize and identify at different distances. So let's take a look at these specs. Now these cameras are able to detect at 96 meters, observe at 38 meters, recognize at 19 meters and identify at nine. Essentially, when you compare these Dory specs, they're identical. Now, one of the main differences between these cameras is the white LED and the microphone, or the white LED range and the microphone. Now, one has a range of 60 meters, and that's on the, I think it's the 87 G2, um, but that has no mic for audio recording. And then if you look at the 2087, the white light can only go 30 meters, but does have an audio mic. Both cameras have built-in micro SD card slots capable of accepting 256 gigabytes as backup. You know, the great thing about this is you're able to record directly to the camera as well as the NVR. Now, enough of this talking, let's go see how these cameras perform against each other. So first up, we've got the uh, 30 meter bullet. Um, as you can see here, it's it's not a bad picture. Um, overall, it's, it's pretty good. Like it's got some definition in there, like you'd expect from an eight megapixel. You can see the number plates uh, and so forth from there. Um, so overall, it's not a bad picture. Look, take a look at the 60 meter. The 60 meter is like a next level of sharpness. Like everything just seems to be uh, more in focus, seems to be a lot sharper. Uh, but what I'll do is put a side by side comparison here. And then you can clearly see like there's a difference between the two, like the 30 meter on the left versus the 60 meter on the right. Like everything just seems a bit more, um, more sharper, like the colors are both, you know, pretty good, both accurate, um, but just overall, this eight megapixel, the 60 meter version, just seems to be a lot sharper. So what we'll do is I'll do our walk test, uh, and then if we freeze it there, so you can see the difference between the two, like the 30 meter, it's it's not a bad image, but when you compare it to the 60 meter, there's there's definitely a lot, um, a lot more detail and a lot sharper. So what we'll do now is we'll go and do a close-up walk test. Um, and then as we're walking up here, we freeze it there. You know, once again, like the 60 meter, there's just more detail in that image. Um, it's a lot sharper and it's a lot crisper uh, overall um, as far as what you can see. Um, but yeah, just a, a clear indication between the two. And this even just proves it a bit more here as we we go through. So we'll zoom into the car on the uh, on the left, or we'll take a, a snapshot of the cars on the left. You can see here, there's the number plate from the 30 meter versus the number plate on the 60 meter. Like these are both eight megapixel cameras with the same sensor spec. Uh, once again, the, the van on the right, just a clear difference between the two. Um, that eight mega, 60 meter, eight megapixel is just a better sensor or a better lens on it. It just, everything seems more in focus. And then if we look at the next shot, which is about 20 meters away, like you can't even make out uh, what the numbers or the, of the letters are on the 30 meter versus the 60 meter where you can clearly see what's going on. Now in this next test, we'll do um, nighttime shot with the white light on. So this is the 30 meter. 
uh, once again, it's a nice shot. It's a beautiful shot. Uh, everything seems uh, right. You know, it's very minimal grain whatsoever. But that white light, as you can see there, does reflect off the number plate, making it difficult. Now we're going to the 60 meter. So this is what with the white light on. Uh, once again, you know, it doesn't seem as oversaturated this picture, um, but it is it is quite a nice picture also with minimum minimal grain and stuff going on as well. Now we'll do a side by side comparison walk. So there's a little bit more ghosting on the 30 meter, uh, but when you freeze it there, uh, you can see that the 30 meter actually, there's a little bit of ghosting that could be just on the frame rates that we've got versus the 60 meter, but there is a ghosting there. But the 60 meter just seems the colors to be a little bit more, um, seems to be a little bit better than say the 30 meter version. Uh, but overall at this particular distance, you're not gonna be able to make out any identifying features whatsoever. So on the next test, we'll do a, a, a close up. And if we freeze it there, um, you can see the difference between the two. So even at this distance, you know, the, the white light is just making things a little bit more hard to see. Uh, and then if you kind of look at it there, you know, maybe the 30 meter, you can see the jumper lettering a little bit better. Um, but overall, like they're still great shots, but you just don't expect, you know, pure clear identifications with these eight megapixels. And then we'll have a look at the number plates. Um, once again, that white light, it just reflects off the number plates and you can't see any different between the two. And then once again, you can see that at that distance, the eight megapixel and the 60 meter version is just picking up the number plates and the detail is just a lot better than say that 30 meter version. And we'll just look at the tree line here. Once again, you can just see the difference between the two. Now in this next shot, what we'll do is we'll turn off the white light. So this is the white light, 30 meter with uh, white light turned off. Now the only ambient light that you're getting here is maybe coming through that um, big street light on the right. And then, you know, a little bit of some light coming through from next door. But like looking at a picture, it's a great picture. Like you can clearly see all the colors, like it's really a vibrant picture um, as you expect from a color view. Uh, and then you can start to make out the number plates now because there's nothing reflecting on it. So if we go and do our walk test, uh, you can see there's a lot of ghosting appearing. And then if we freeze it there, uh, you're not gonna be able to see anything. Like you'll just be able to observe and know that something's happening in that area. But as far as identification and stuff's concerned, you're not gonna notice any difference. Now take a look at the 60 meter version. This is just like next level compared to say the 30 meter. Like everything just seems sharper. You know, the, the colors are, are better, the tree line's sharper. Like everything just seems more in focus compared to say that 30 meter. This is a really great shot here. Now we'll go and do our walk test uh, over here. And then as you can see here as we're walking, the difference between the two. So you can see here that the, you know, the 60 meters, like you can see the number plates better, but overall there's still a lot of ghosting happening in these images. So you're really only gonna be able to um, observe what's happening and what's going on. We'll do a bit of a walk up close test. And then if we freeze it there, um, the shots here in a close up are not too bad. The 60 meter, you're probably getting a little bit a little bit sharper there, but it's very minuscule as far as what you can see. And then you can't, uh, as far as the lettering and the jumpers are concerned, you can kind of see what's going on. It's a little bit difficult to see, but overall you kind of know what's there. Um, but you know, this comparison here, you just can see like that 60 meter just has that better picture and detail. Now we'll go across to number plates um, and difference between the two, like it's, you can still make out the numbers, it's a little more difficult, but with the 60 meter on the right, you can clearly see uh, those numbers and identify those numbers. Uh, zooming in over here to the, the fake number plate, once again, like the 60 meter, you can just see and make out those letters compared to say that 30 meter. And once again, with the van on the right, um, you know, that just speaks for itself. <laughs> uh, the difference in clarity and sharpness between the two. 
and then we'll just go into the tree line. And as I'd expect, the 60 meter just is a lot sharper um, as far as what's going on. At that particular distance, which is about 30 meters away, you're not really getting any clear definition, but just as a comparison with this wheel, you can just see the difference. For some reason, even though they're both the same sensor, the 60 meter just seems to produce a better picture all around. Okay, so what are my thoughts on these cameras? Look, if you didn't have both cameras next to each other to compare, then I don't believe you would know any different. However, we do. And to be honest, after seeing both cameras, the 30 meter version is a little disappointing for an eight megapixel camera. You know, according to the specs, they should both produce similar results, but it's just not the case. The 60 meter model is definitely clearer and sharper. Um, nighttime performance of both cameras is similar, but the 60 meter has, is a better camera. You know, both of them both suffer from varying degrees of motion blur and can be overexposed in its areas when viewing um, and using the white light LEDs. But I would turn them off if you have some ambient light around, um, so I don't believe it's necessary. The 60 meter, in my opinion, outperforms the 30 meter version just in clarity and sharpness. It's a much better picture. Note, these are straight out of the box reviews, so the cameras have not been touched. However, you may be able to get improved results if you increase the shutter speed. The main features that set these cameras apart um, from each other is that white LED. You know, the 30 meter model has that mic where the 60 meter one doesn't have, doesn't have it. However, it is around $50 more than the 30 meters, but is it worth that extra cost? Well, that depends on what you're after in your budget. The 30 meter model, you know, it's not a terrible camera. It still performs well and produces nice picture quality. But from testing the 60 meter version, it's clearly the better camera. The 60 meter model may be more expensive, but it's definitely worth the extra cost if you don't require a microphone. On that note, that's it for this video. If you found this video informative, don't forget to give us a thumbs up. And while you're at it, hit us up in the comment sections below for any questions you may have. At EQL, we're always here to help and support your business.